Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Uh, Thank I, you for having me. I love your walk, and so I'm Thank excited you. to have you on. I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. And so for the first part, can you please explain a little bit about yourself for those who don't know who you are? Yep. My name is Blake Voigt. I am a magician originally from Indiana, now living in Los Angeles, California. And I perform magic, invent magic, um, consult for other magicians and movies, and I am obsessed with magic. That's awesome. And so what, uh, what made you want to become a magician when you were younger? Uh, when I was younger, I saw a magician uh, performing at a pizza hut when I was like eight years old. <clears throat> that was the first time I ever saw magic. And he was there on a Wednesday night and he was doing walk around at the restaurant for people. And I was obsessed with watching him. And then I found out the first Wednesday of every month he was at that pizza hut. So I started having, making sure I was there with a family member. And then like the second Wednesday of every month, he was at a different pizza hut. So I figured out his schedule and I saw him, I ate a lot of pizza from when I was eight to nine. And then for my ninth birthday party, my parents hired him to do a one hour magic show in our garage, like for our family, for my party. And from that day on, I knew I wanted to do magic. That's great. And it's crazy because a lot of the pizza huts now are closing. I know. It's so sad. Yeah, There's one right by my house and I was out on my bike and it said uh, permanently closed. I'm like, oh, whoa. That's... I know it's such a bummer. It's so, so much of it's just like delivery now, but the, yeah. the stores were great. And so, uh, you've performed shows like solo shows as well, as correct? Yep. All right. I've you performed all over doing solo shows. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, do you have a favorite chick you perform? Ooh, good question. Um, I feel like my favorite trick changes regularly i don't have one all time um usually it's whatever trick i'm working on at the time like if you know i leave tricks in the show that i've been doing for a long time um, but i'm working on a new trick right now that i'll be filming at the end of this month for pen and tellers fool us oh you're going back yep it'll be my fourth time on fool us and yeah. i have not fooled them yet and so yeah. This is my my best attempt yet, I think. And so that trick is currently my favorite because I'm doing it all the time, anywhere and everywhere I can just to practice it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be excited to see that episode. That's going to be good. Thanks, man. I'm excited too. And so speaking of Penn & Teller, uh, you've been on three times. Yep. Uh, so what was the process of auditioning the first time? The first time I was on, so I don't know what season they are on. They are on uh, many, many, many seasons. And so the first ever season was in the UK, in London, I think. And then the second season was uh, in the US. So I was on the first ever US season, which was season two. And that was a very, very, very long time ago. And I can't. It was so long ago. I can't remember what the process was like, but I remember they reached out to me because I, I have a lot of friends in the magic community and I'd been doing a lot of shows. And so they have like casting agents who, you know, scour the internet for people to have on the show. And so they reached out to me and asked me if I would like to audition for the show. And so I submitted to them a linking card trick which every season they have tons of card tricks submitted to fool us. And so um, not that card tricks are bad. I'm obsessed with card tricks. It's just, they have a very difficult time on the show picking which card tricks to put on that year. Cause it can't be uh, a season. A whole show about card tricks. Yeah, exactly. And they got to have a good blend. So I had happened to send them a linking card trick where you tear the centers out of the cards and you link them together. And they really liked it. And they said to me, oh, like, we love this trick. We just have a lot of card tricks. So if you can send us any other tricks, we'll have you on for sure, maybe. But like, if you if this card trick's the best you can do, we'll see, like maybe. And so I took that note and I figured out how to do the exact same card trick with dollar bills because I can I can split bills open and put them back together. 
So I figured out the same same exact trick and I resent it to them a few days later and they wrote back, this is exactly what we want. You can be on the show. So, you know, when people ask me if they have any advice for how to get on Fool Us, I think that, you know, if you have a good non-card trick, it's a better chance. But if you have a card trick, you can to totally send it. They they have card tricks on the show. It's just harder to get card tricks on the show. That's great. And so I think the the one I watched recently, it, uh, did you do like the stool trick? Yes. Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah I did a, a stool trick on there and didn't didn't get them with it, but uh, they really liked the trick. And uh, I really liked that trick. That trick was my favorite trick to perform for a long time. Yeah, I love magic. And that one really stumped me so much. Like, it's crazy. The, the origin of that, like, I do a trick where I predict the colors of two stools, for those that don't know, and then the, the third chair disappears. And years ago, I was working for another magician, and he he said to the room of, of consultants, I want to do a trick where I predict the three colors of chairs, which is an old classic of magic, like a chair test. And the magician said, but I don't know what to do. I want to do something different with the third. What should, does anybody have any ideas as to what I could do for the third? And so I raised my hand and I said, you should make the third one disappear. And him and everyone else in the room was like, nah, that's not a good idea. And I was like, okay. And so I wrote it down in my private journal and saved it. And then years later, James Corden had saw my fool us with the dollar bills and they had seen me on America's Got Talent and they asked if I wanted to be on the show. And I sent them a bunch of magic trick ideas that I did and they didn't like any of them. And so I was like, well, how about this? And I wrote the the, dis the vanishing stool trick that you saw on Fool Us. I wrote it. I had no idea how it would work. I just wrote it and I sent it to them. And they're like, we love this. Can you come on the show next week and do this trick? And I said, well, I made this up. This doesn't exist. I have no idea how it works. I'd have to figure it out. And they, they wrote back and they're like, well, now we love it even more that it doesn't even exist. So they were like, if you can ever figure out how to do this trick, you can be on James Corden's talk show. So I spent six months developing it with a builder friend of mine and who can weld, which I, I, I wasn't able to do at the time. And we figured it out. That's awesome. So you create your own tricks then, right? Yes, sir. Yep. It's a lot, lot harder to create for myself, but I, I do that. That's awesome. And so... What advice would you give to other magicians who would like to start creating their own tricks? The, um, I don't know. I mean, there's no technique or method that I, I've seen work for everyone. I can just speak to what works for me. I have a very hard time sitting down trying to write down good ideas. So I try to sit down and write down bad ones. And so what I tend to do is if I'm not traveling, if I'm not busy as an exercise every day, I will write down 10 bad ideas in a notebook, 10 bad ones. And it's a lot easier to sit down and try to write 10 bad ones um, because it's a lot. It's, I find it's too much pressure to try to sit down and write down a good one because you get stuck. And so if I work on a new trick for a week, I'll write down 10 a day, you know, at, at some point that day. And then at the end of the week, I have 70 ideas, which is a lot. And, and what tends to happen is one or two good ones accidentally slip in there. And I so I find that it's a numbers game for me. And the more I write down, the, the more uh, good ones come, come to be. That's awesome. And so uh, can you please explain a little bit about uh, your inspirations as a magician? inspirations i i'm obsessed with movies i'm obsessed with uh stand-up comedy and art um i love all of those things i love live shows live concerts music concerts um a good movie with a good story or a good twist ending that you, you can't see coming i love all of that stuff so i feel like i draw inspiration from my magic and all of those things. I I don't find as much inspiration for my magic in magic. Like unfortunately, a lot of times when I see other magicians do a really great trick, 
I'm just like, ah, oh, nah, that's so smart. I, you know, and now I can't just do what they did. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I love watching magic, but most of my ideas don't come from other magicians. They come from me watching a good movie or from uh, listening to a good song, or I just love stand up comedy and love uh, how, how jokes are constructed and told. I love those things. That's awesome. And you sell some of your lights to your tricks as well on your website, correct? Yep. I, I've uh, Whenever I was in high school, just like that Pizza Hut magician I saw, I, I booked my own restaurant. And so every Monday night from my junior year of high school and my senior year of high school, I did three hours of walk around magic every Monday night for two years. So my magic ability went from like here to here in two years, just from repetitions and and being in front of an audience every Monday for three hours. And what started to happen was I would take these tricks that I would read in books or DVDs or online that I would see, and I would do them exactly like I'd been taught them. Like I bought the secrets and I was doing them at the restaurant. And then I started realizing that like, that joke for that guy doesn't really fit me. So I'm going to put my own joke in there. And then I was like, that gimmick could be made thinner. So I started making the gimmicks thinner. And then I was like, you know, this same trick could be done if I built something that did this. And so I just started changing all these tricks that I had, I had started doing. And then I went to my very first ever magic convention in my senior year of high school. And I started showing other magicians these things that I did. And they were like, you invented this? This is brand new. You should sell this. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is just my version of this guy's thing. I changed this and I changed this. And enough people were like, no, no, no. Once you change enough stuff, it's original and you can sell it. And so that's when I started selling tricks. Um, I sold them through Theory 11, through Penguin. There was an old magic company called Paper Crane Magic. I released some stuff through. And then now I just have my own a shop and and that's nice to be able to do but um i have never invented a magic trick with the intention of selling it or with the intention of of making money off of it i have every trick on my shop i selfishly invented for myself i performed it just myself for one to two years and then once i had done that then i released it to other people um and i found that that made for better releases because I know there are some people out here there who just invent to try to sell the tricks and stuff. That's awesome. Speaking of magic conventions, uh, have, have you been to MagiFest in Columbus? MagiFest was the first ever convention I went to because I was in Indiana. So it was just a, a road trip over next door. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to go next year. I've never been. So oh, it is so awesome. How what what grade are you in or how old are you? I'm going to junior year. Amazing. So that's yeah. right around the same time I first went to one. And it was just so cool to meet other magicians and meet people who maybe weren't necessarily my own age, but just were equally as obsessed as me with this thing. And um, yeah, it's just you're going to have a, if you go, you're going to have a blast. Yeah, I'm excited. So uh, what advice would you give to other students who would like to become magicians other students who well so i think you know you mean if they want to become like a professional paid magician or just like a magician a professional paid um i would just say do magic all the time as often as you can for as many people as you can and you know there's steve martin the comedian has a great quote where he says, um, be so good, they can't ignore you. And so like, if you're doing magic all the time for people all over, whether it's friends and family or classmates, teachers at school without getting in trouble, but like, you know, how I first got paid was I was a freshman in high school and I just did magic for everyone. I never thought about making money, you know, in high school, at least I was just doing it for fun. And my golf coach, had said because I was on the golf team in high school he said my daughter's turning nine or ten years old would you perform at her birthday and I was like yes so that was my first ever paid show 
and and he was like how much do you want to charge and i was like ah, i'll just do it i'll just do it for free cuz like it's my first show so i don't want to charge for something that it could be horrible and it probably was horrible but i did i did a 1 hour show and after the show he tipped me $40 he tipped me two $20 bills and then so for the first like year or two anytime anybody hired me They were like, how much do you charge? And I was like, $40. I charged $40 for a magic show because I knew in my head, like one person had paid me that. So that's, that's plenty, you know? And so I, I don't think, I mean, now at this point in my career, like it's important to make money to be able to pay for food and rent and stuff, but I've never really done it for the money. I've done it. Money has always come, which is really nice. and i feel really lucky that that has happened but i've always done it just because i'm obsessed with it when when i was in college i was a pre dentistry major so i went to college to become an orthodontist because i thought i needed to have a real job and not magic and my grades were really bad because i was really bad at chemistry and biology and so i had to go see a career counselor uh or by ordered order of the university because my grades were so bad and the career counselor sat me down and she said if you woke up tomorrow and money did not exist what would you do from when you woke up till when you went to bed and i said i would just play with magic tricks all day and she said then you're in the wrong major so i think to answer your question any advice i would have for students wanting to become a magician i if 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 magic is what you fall asleep and wake up thinking about and i would just recommend doing it all the time for anyone and anywhere and i would start off by not doing it for money if there is an opportunity to do a show for free do it if there's a you know a, a, a fair or a local event or you know someone in your school has a party just offering your services for free has been the quickest way i have found that you surprisingly can make money doing this That's great. And so, uh, what advice would you give to your younger self if you could go back in time? Ooh, I, I, I mean, this is like super heady, but I wouldn't give him any advice because then I wouldn't end up where I am. I'm, I'm really happy where I am. Um, I feel like every mistake I've made along the way has helped me in some way. I think that's one, one big thing that was great advice someone gave me is like, if anything ever goes wrong or if a bad experience as long as you learn from it you know um maybe that advice just be like just do anything you want to do and if it goes wrong just learn from it that would be the advice i give because you know i i'm thankful for the gigs i did that were bad i'm thankful for the gigs i did that were good um i just take took any opportunity that was presented to me and most of the time 90% of the ones that i thought would be something never came to be and then the ones where i thought were like nothing will ever come from this ended up being like the biggest things that ever happened to me so i think it's just unpredictable that's great so that actually wraps up the interview so i'd like to thank you for joining me today thank you for having me